Yesterday, the final inmates at Hawking Correctional were moved out of the building. All employees will be transferred to other prisons in the state by the end of next month as the prison effectively shuts down. This closure initially shocked the community, but the question now is, what will this facility become? Holbrook's Cafe is in the heart of downtown Nelsonville. Dan Jones, co-owner of the cafe, is worried about what will happen once the prison shuts down, since many of the workers have become regular customers. Yeah, we were really used to seeing people in that uniform come through the door, and there was a lot of really nice people that were going to, you know, not have in a cafe on a regular basis anymore. Hawking Correctional is part of the Southeastern Correctional Complex and has operated as a prison since the 80s. Three days into the new year, word came from the state, it's closing. The reason? Inefficiency. According to this initial announcement, this unit is the single most expensive facility to operate in the entire state costing $65 a day for each inmate, compared to $21 at similar facilities. The Hawking unit costs approximately $11.5 million a year for its 430 inmates and 110 staff members. Comparable sized facilities in Richland, Belmont, and Trumbull counties cost approximately $3 million annually. This facility is so large at over 18 acres, and to put that in perspective, that's even bigger than Ohio State's football stadium, which is why so many community leaders have talked about using the space to help serve our community in many ways. State Representative Jay Edwards and Nelsonville City Council President Ed Mash, who worked at the prison for over 30 years before his role on City Council, were furious about the lack of community input in this decision to close, and Corrections Director Gary Moore heard about it. I was upset with the prison closing, I was upset with Director Moore, Director Moore upset me, I probably upset him with my statements that I made after that, but there's no point, we're two grown adults and there's no point of holding to that and, and it, we, we need to move forward and make this a win for the region. Initially I'm not going to die, I mean it angered me at first, I mean I thought wow, I mean because it's devastating to the area and me being on city council I knew the effect that it would have on you know, our community, not just our community but our region. Congressman Steve Stivers held a closed meeting the end of January at Hawking College. What was first meant to be a small discussion on future possibilities for the building once the prison closes exploded to more than 80 people in attendance. Corrections Department leaders faced off with the Hawking College president, state and local lawmakers from across Athens County, community groups and even a local judge all shared ideas for the future of the facility, but it was not open to the public. I know that the prison closure is still a very emotional issue for a lot of people, but you know, everybody handled this in a very thoughtful way and was forward looking, which was the point of the meeting. How do we leverage this potential open facility to serve the needs of the broader region? And how can I, as a federal official, bring federal dollars to bear to do that? Nelsonville City Council asked Stivers and the Corrections Department to consider giving the city ownership of the building. But that might not be a realistic goal. Um, but I don't think the financial situation would allow for, for Nelsonville to have that asset on their books. Right now I'm standing in front of the water tower in Nelsonville, which is right next to Hawking Correctional Facility. City Council is really worried about how they're going to find the money to pay the $360,000 annual water and sewage bill once the prison closes. But as far as for the city of Nelsonville, our number one concern right now needs to be what can we get in that facility to get a water bill um, because it's $30,000 a month that the city is missing out upon that we, we got to figure a solution pretty quick. And we are working actively on that. Many leaders are worried about a potential fiscal emergency for Nelsonville once the facility shuts down. I mean, I, I hate to say it, we're faced with some staffing changes and, and changing our entire way of operating. I mean, we're going to be at bare bones minimum to be able to operate and support the city. MASH asked the state to help soften the blow by granting Nelsonville a $360,000 impact fee for at least the next three years. To me, I, I feel they have an obligation to pay us that money. I mean, the obligation is you can't go into a community and shut something down and destroy it. I mean, and then that's what happened. You got to give people time. At first, community leaders were pushing for the state to reconsider the decision to close. But now the focus is what this facility could become to help solve some of the region's core issues. Poverty, lack of broadband access, jobs, and the need for more jail cells were all discussed. 
But what kept coming up again and again was the opioid epidemic in southeastern Ohio and the need for a regional treatment center. I just had a guy come out of jail. I released him on bond. He posted a bond. He used meth in jail. Absolutely. Admitted it. Used every day he was in jail. So how am I helping him by keeping him in jail? He went back. So, so the point is that you guys are all being given an opportunity to succeed here. Judge Fred Moses took the bench in 2013 in Hawking County Municipal Court. Moses helped create a program to combat the opioid crisis that was destroying the area. Moses holds a weekly drug court to make sure people in the program are staying clean, completing their community service hours, and finding a job. I just started keeping a running total of what people were on. What I found is somewhere between 68 to 75 percent of people coming through my court were on some type of opiate. Moses has one of the most successful drug courts in Ohio. I have a proven program that's been around for a long time that is effective. There's some other good programs out there, but I put my numbers up against anybody else. Clearly you've had great success in your drug court about treating those addicted to opioids. What do you think it would mean for the community if this empty facility could become a treatment center? Yeah, I would love to see something like that. I don't know how it looks, and that, that's the hard part, I think, for everybody involved in this, is the DRC's basically said, here it is, figure out what to do with it, we'll, we'll, we'll pick something out of it. The Department of Rehabilitation and Corrections welcomes input in the form of a written proposal. The DRC will let anyone tour the facility to help write the proposal. We toured the facility with MASH and others interested in making a proposal. However, we were denied any opportunity to record video on the tour. Nelsonville City Council and Judge Moses plan to coordinate with others to submit proposals. The day I heard about this, we started. I started working on funding and working with our city manager, uh, Mr. Bargy, and uh, we're, we, we work on it almost daily. The DRC promised that all 110 employees will be offered ongoing job opportunities. It isn't clear right now where they will all end up. It could be any DRC prison in the state but most employees plan to move to the Lancaster branch of the Southeastern Correctional Complex. Well, I believe most of them have the time in that they feel that their job is safe and everything else, but it's just the travel time. I mean, and most of them, a lot of them have worked outside of this region and they were lucky enough to be able to get transferred into this region and, you know, it gave them a lot more quality time to spend with their family and not as much expense driving and transportation. And now they're thrown right back into that ring again where they're going to have to start driving again and everything. While Jones from Fullbrook's Cafe may be losing some of his loyal customers, he knows this isn't the end for Nelsonville. Well, I think on a positive note, you know, this will not be the end of Nelsonville. You know, we've been through a lot. You know, people thought town was going to die when the coal was gone, and then when the clay was gone, and then when the boot factory closed, and then when the bypass happened. And, and Nelsonville's always persevered. It's just kind of, you know, a cycle of two steps forward and one step back. And it's hard to absorb these blows sometimes. And hopefully, you know, everybody displaced, you know, makes it work with their life and the city government can make something happen positively. So what this facility will become, who will own it, and what happens next is really still all up in the air, Joseph. The only thing that is certain right now is it is going to shut down March 30th. Okay, Michaela, you also mentioned the DRC is accepting proposals for ideas. When are those due and what kind of information are they looking for? So those proposals are also due on March 30th, that same day the prison closes. And the DRC is really looking for something really specific on how they can utilize that really large facility. And, you know, they're open to more than one use in that plan. Absolutely. Michaela, also, what about these prisoners? Where did they go? Well, as of yesterday, they've all been transferred to other facilities, although we did hear about one inmate who's 80 years old and he was released. All right, Michaela, thanks a lot for the story.